I'm back, I'm doing more laundry. So I have more time to play while I wait for laundry. We have started Ashton, I believe. And I accidentally clicked through a few things. It looks like we're gonna be starting at the party. So parties have never really been my thing. They're always such a hassle and take so much time off my day. Prior plans and commitments canceled, all for the sake of playing along with others. Hannah Wright, welcome, welcome everyone. I hated them even as a child. Please make yourselves at home. But mom often insisted. She'd slick back my hair back, put me in one of those stuffy dinner jackets, and if there were any children around, urged me to make friends. Never mind how utterly loud and tedious it was. It was all for the sake of keeping up appearances. To some extent, lies have already surrounded me, long before I'd chosen what I wanted to do with my life. Luckily, there were easy ways to tune everything out, and much to my mom's frustration, I always managed to sneak my CD player along. I kept myself into my music, had my own little world, until I learned to observe. It's a simple matter of awareness, really. And for someone with keen eyes, a skewed necktie or a simple flip of a wrist alone could tell volumes about a person. I still don't like parties, especially ones as big and fancy as the Wright's housewarming. However, when there's actual reason to go to them, I figure... They're not too bad. Be careful with Shirley, all right? Besides, like it or not, it's all part of the job. I'm here on a mission. One that has the name Luke Wright plastered all over it. You think the man would want to remain inconspicuous? 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 After his name was linked to several high-profile crimes across Luxbourne. Granted, most of it have gone cold over the years, having stagnant, having stagnated without any lead or evidence, but that still doesn't make him any less suspect. Yet... Here he is, throwing a party in his own backyard. Although having observed the man this past year, I'm not even shocked. He craves it. The damn spotlight. Constantly yearns for attention like a neglected puppy. It doesn't take a genius to figure out why he's now... Why he's nowhere to be found on his own... It's not gonna, it's gonna be one of those days. It doesn't take a genius to figure out why he's nowhere to be found in his own party. Should be at his own party. But that's not the problem here. What pisses me off is how far his reach extends, how close he has creeped into the lives of the people I care about. Again, Luke, like a stubborn itch you couldn't get rid of. First Professor Clark, then there's Isabella. I also spotted Z-Man here a while ago, and now, now there's also Rebecca. Can't you at least act with a bit more shame? Becca, if I find a single scratch on Shirley, there will be hell to pay. <laughs> <laughs> There will also be hell to pay if he so much as harms a hair on either Zach's or Rebecca's heads. Worrying about Isabella's brief dealing with him is stressing itself already. I doubt he'll attempt anything in front of other people, though. It would tarnish his glorious reputation and he values appearances more than anything. That doesn't necessarily mean he isn't capable of it. More than, in fact. And on off chance he does something, I wouldn't be responsible for Those my guys actions. know what they're doing. They're handling cars worth more than your precious Shirley. For Zachary's and Rebecca's sake, however, I really hope this is simply this will simply be another housewarming party. Even though something tells me it's an anything but. Call it a detective's intuition or whatever. When Luke Wright's involved, nothing good has ever come out of it. I can't let my guard down here. Even more so when a familiar car slows to a stop and out comes. Chief? Oh dear. My presence here might be odd at best, but I have an excuse. One that this man handed to me himself a year ago, along with a heavy dose of flattery for the newly promoted detective inspector. Can't exactly say the same for my good old boss, can I? Although to see him here, chatting up with the Luxborn rich and famous isn't such a big surprise in itself. No disrespect meant, but the guy is obviously a social climber. What is surprising is the fact he seems all too eager to mingle with a person of interest's wife. Just what the hell is he Ashton, doing here? What's... Sorry, Becca, I just saw someone I need to catch up with. Longtime friend. What the shit is going on here? Wait, Ash, what about... This won't be long. Be careful while I'm gone, okay? Hey, be careful! About what exact- I don't want to draw attention to myself either. At least not until he's given me a proper reason to spoil his little party. Thank you for the invite, Anna. Husband still missing, I see. I should be saying the same of your darling Rochelle, Lee. The doctors again. For now, the best I can do is wait and remain inconspicuous. I don't know why I hate that word so much. Especially with Chief here, whose motives are dubious at best. If it means having to pretend I don't know Zack or Rebecca, or forcing myself to rub elbows with people I barely know, let alone like, then so be it. I can't involve anyone. Wandering is out of the question as well, when there are guards and civvies stationed here and there. All right. Sure, getting past them is something I could do with ease, but I'd rather not right now. When I'm on, when I'm, when I'm one of the few snooping and roaming about, it'd be best to try and do so through, do so once there's a crowd of people. 
And if their interior designer is drunk and claims yes, it's believed? Yes, well, what about Luke? Should we file a missing persons report now, or do you want to wait 24 hours? He's around. You know, I can tell if someone's bluffing. It'll all come down to how well I'll play my cards tonight. With a good hand, this party's going to give me the breakthrough I need to crack Luke right. Or something to prove my suspicions wrong. Maybe find out what kind of game my boss is also playing. I've had an inkling before, a few hunches tempered down by how much of a bumbling fool the man appears. But one does not simply deal with their rights and get invited to a party they host without wanting anything from either of the two. Or it's the other way around. So the last weary gaze, whoops, with the last weary glance, not a gaze, at the two, I head into the ballroom. I just hope this will not complicate things further. Shit. By the time the party's in full swing, night has fallen, yet there still isn't a Luke Wright in sight. The man can be quite ostentatious, but this? Frankly, I'm impressed. I don't even know how many I hate that word. <laughs> Where's Dubor? I've already stuffed into my face. One too many, probably. The servers are already giving me a stink eye every time I saunter over the buffet table. Blame your employer, not me. He's the one who had the guts to show up late. Besides, most of the guest idle talk is concentrated in this area. Despite standing on the same roof with the very people they're whispering about, some just couldn't resist. I might as well keep an ear out for any useful info. Is Suarez info. still fixing that tech problem? <laughs> tech problem? It's been three years. Sooner or later, the blighter will put two and two together. <sighs> he might have already. If the red tape I'm being slammed with these past few months suggests anything, that or someone has been pulling the strings. I wouldn't be shocked. This case would not have gone this long if Scumbag didn't have a mule of some kind in the force. Shush you, we all know Suarez just wants an out. I knew he was bad news the day the merge of its efforts incorporated happened. Feh. Glad I did not have to deal with that. But keep it down, someone might hear. The wife especially. This kind of negligence has always been an advantage, but sometimes I wish I could be smashed drunk while doing this. Having sharp ears also means you get to hear the most unsavory things. Who cheated on who this week? One person's motive for bashing someone's skull against a wall, or a father's excuse for burning his own daughter alive. That sort of stuff. After a few years, it gets tired and you get desensitized to it. But humans could also be the dumb. Could also be downright awful. Sometimes there simply isn't enough brain bleach in the world. Sadly, the wine is a no-go tonight, and mostly for show. I'm up for another drive later, for one, and I definitely want to be sober in case anything comes up. And something always comes up in assignments like this. A detective inspector dying of cardiac arrest, for example. Because I can feel the moment my heart grinds to a halt, the second I shift my eyes to the corner of the ballroom. Oh, right. Some will say I'm acting a touch bit paranoid, and maybe I am. This is a party, and she's the hostess. It goes to say that she'd take time to mingle with the, her guests. But Hannah Wright, nay, Hannah Wright, nay Evans, isn't without her fair share of accolades. But at least to the public, she doesn't seem like it. And like her husband, she's the one with the business sense, not to mention the impressive track record needed to manage a company, or effectively hide whatever ir irregularity there might be. She's clean, as far as my agents and I have found, but it doesn't rule out a possible, possible involvement with whatever her husband's up to. Hell, Luke Wrights came up clean in previous reports until I bothered to take a deeper look into it. Whatever I've found may not be sufficient to bring anything to jail, or trial, yet, but it's enough to s nurture suspicion. This may be a bit of an overreach, or overreaction, but no one lasts long in my line of work by being careless. You would catch his eye a lot better if you wore nicer clothes, don't you think? Didn't realize the housewarming was going to be this uh, fancy. I would have gone with a nice dress if I knew. Nothing to worry about then. She's probably even more careful with appearances than her own husband, having grown up with the spotlight focused on her. Yet even knowing that, the anxiety stays. Has been here since the party started. I brushed it off earlier. We wouldn't feel edgy, right? I've gone undercover in a party hosted by the very person I'm investigating. That in itself is risky and has plenty of rooms for error. Usually though, the tension passes around the first half or so, half hour or so. I've been trained to remain composed in situations like this. However, with each sap, each second I spend here, this is not a good day for me, it only grows heavier and seeks to overwhelm. An odd feeling that someone is watching me instead. It has been like this since last week, but I should already be used to this. People would be looking at me no matter how small or big a blip I am on their radar. That's what they do in these things. But when the feeling of eyes burning to my back lingers longer than necessary, I've been looking around every now and then to catch the culprit. No luck. And despite my efforts to push the sensation as far down as I could, tiny pinpricks continue to sting the back of my head, and the ghost of the cold touch creeps up my limbs. Until my gaze switches back to Rebecca and Hannah Wright. She stands there. Oh, there she is again. 
Hi, lady. She stands there, dark haired and dirty, sticking out like a sore thumb. Even so, no one seems to notice. Although she's looking away from me, her mere existence here strikes, disturbs. A sense of tunnel vision binds while I stand stock still and gape at her, like my life depends on making sure she stays where she is. I feel trapped in her presence until another gust bumps into me, yanking me out of my stupor. Only then do I realize I've been holding my breath. Before I can figure out what happened, she's gone. A quick scan of the room yields no sign of her. The party continues as if nothing's amiss. I'm not only one to judge, but I'm sure someone like that would not have been allowed in a fancy thing like this. What has the security been doing? Are they really that incompetent for someone to distinct, so distinct to easily get in without notice? There should have been... <laughs> Dude, if you can't tell the bloody woman is a fucking ghost, then that's your own damn problem. There should have been an outcry by now, particularly from the host. She's been standing almost an arm length away from the woman, and yet she simply continues to talk oh, with Rebecca. The professor! And you are little Becky! <coughs> yes, little Becky. My parents couldn't make it since they're in Scotland right now. And Mom says hi, by the way. Is there is there something in the food then? But I'm starting to see things. It couldn't have been the wine, though. I'm every bit as sober as I was when I first stepped off my car. Or is Devor? When would anyone do do that? What would Luke Wright want to do that? He's fishy, but I couldn't see why he'd ever think it'd be a good idea to lace the food he'd serve in his party, with someone like Chief Lee on his guest list to boot. He has been linked to narcotics trade, yep. However, that kind of tactic is below him. That much I could, could tell. Unless there's a mass murder waiting to happen here tonight, which I highly doubt, so... What the fuck was that? There's no time to look deeper into this, even if I want to. Not when I'm not when a telling silence comes upon the room and draws everybody's attention to the main doors of the ballroom. About damn time. Good evening, ladies and gents. Enjoying the party. I hope I'm not too late in welcoming you all to the right mansion. I've been tailing this guy for a while now. Before that, I heard stories from previous officers who tackled this case, none of which are pleasant. Mind, I'm not counting the incident with Professor Clark yet. Pleasant in pleasant. Pleasant is glossing over the gravity of it. My nose is just sorry. While Wright's good at covering whatever shady stuff he's doing, he's shown to be a really rotten guy. At least that's the case when he thinks none of his peers are around to judge him. I've lost tracks of how many accounts of verbal abuse and harassment cases the guy could be pinned with. Standing in the same room as him doesn't make me want to punch him any less. Actually, they're just stronger, but protocols, my, first, my, my case first and foremost. My own opinion of the man shouldn't get ahead of my purpose here. If I want to put him in his place, it should be in court, while, with all the proper charges filed against him. And I'll only be able to do that once I gather enough evidence to pin this Welcome bastard down. Welcome one and all to our humble abode. Tea -tea. Tonight, if you have yet to find yourself in your roles, you are our ladies and lords of the court of your king and queen. If you would excuse my presumptuousness. <laughs> so, enjoy the feast that has been laid out for your senses as we only allowed the best to be served. Enjoy the rest of your night, everyone. Suppressing my annoyance, I prepare to step away from the crowd. I miss the cheers and claps, now is a good time as any to move. Try to find that something the McCullough woman talked about in the first place. I have no plans to actually shake hands with the slime ball himself. A fake smile is plastered on my face while I pretend to listen to one of the other guests gossiping about him. All while slowly inching out of the ballroom. Unfortunately, before I get any further... Are you feeling ill, Rochelle? Perhaps you need to sit down and... Rich people only have two ways to resolve their mess. Either they quietly deal with it behind closed doors, or they create an even greater problem out of it and just blows up in everybody's face one way or another. Fun. No! Shut it, you monster! I ain't talking to you! I'm talking to this scumbag over here! You bloody bastard standing there with your smarmy smile! Not even a few seconds in and this is already proving itself to be a big public spectacle. Why spend money on a television to buy daytime soap operas? You could just go to one of these parties and see the action unfold in real life. You get free food, too. Really, if I were an actual guest, I'd just take this as a some sort sordid form of amusement. Watch your tongue! You're on thin ice, Rochelle. Where's your husband? Who even invited you? But I'm not a guest who's here for a good time. I need to focus on him, even though this whole, even through this whole sorry tale. So I wait, I listen, I observe. Interesting, isn't it, though? To the chief inspector's wife. October 29th, Saturday. The morning after starts off quiet. Even the whole of Salem Well residence seems usually still. The open hallway, when I step out, is devoid of tenants. No sound coming from other units either. 
It's almost as if something's brewing on the horizon. A peaceful night's sleep still does wonders for the mood, though. I can't even remember the last time I've slept without any urgent interrupting. It's a nice break from all the bad news lately. If it wasn't for the insistent buzzing in my pocket waking me up, I'd sleep in. The ringing has stopped before I could move somewhere private, but sleep also has been effective, effectively kicked out. But sleep has also been effectively kicked out of my system by then. Pity I could use a little more rest until I have to face the other storm. Of course, I owe Rebecca an explanation. It doesn't matter if it's the whole truth or another hastily spun tale. Although I haven't really figured out how to go about this yet. Unlike Zach and Isabella, who don't usually ask questions or are content with what they, little I could share, Rebecca's rather quick on the trigger. It'll have to be set aside for later, though. The chief's name stares back at me. Almost if it's, mo if it's mocking me. Sad. It would have been... Really? It would have been nice to just chill after last night and maybe half listen to the news. Sure, it's the same thing we've been hearing lately. I can't with this. I can't with hearing this. Anymore. Still be standing around outside of the chilly Luxembourg morning on the phone with my boss. So I got answered if only to get this over with. Where are you right now? Now, that's a tone I didn't expect from him at this hour. Just thinking how this will go already gives me a headache. Maybe I reach up and pinch the bridge of my nose to stave it this off. This is why I won't ever drink myself senseless. What was that? Nothing, Chief. A pleasant morning to you, too. He's probably calling to rag on me or complain about his wife, which is really none of my business unless it affects my case. It seems like the usual rich man cheats on wife deal. Although I would have followed up on it if it were somebody else's wife. But figuring it's the Chief's, hey, I trust him to come clean if the missus is related to right shady dealings. This is why I left before they even hauled the woman out last night. I'm not going to go around investigating cheating husbands and wives when it's probably just that. Chief appears to have a different idea in mind, though. Nothing pleasant in the morning. Anyway, where are you? I told you millions of times before to keep your lines open. He did, and not only him. Zach, Rebecca, Isabella, all of them have said the same thing numerous times in the past. But I was undercover last night. A phone call is the last thing I want to happen. And then there are other things I need to focus on at the time. Besides, we have radios and work-issued phones. Why isn't he using those channels if this Just is urgent? Just woke up, sir. As awesome as it is to hear your voice this morning, it really is early. If you could give me a few minutes just to wake myself up, that'd be swell. No need for that. This won't take long. Is something wrong? Am I needed at the precinct ASAP? Oh no, everything's good over there. Just look it. Pray. Don't take this personally, alright? You're off the Luxbourne firm case. It's done today. Well, I did not expect to hear that either. This must be some kind of cosmic joke. I allow some awkward seconds to pass. Chief must be pulling another one of his awful pranks. Out of his bad mood or severe hangover, maybe? Everyone knows that when the given chance, he ex exercises no control with his drinking. If it wasn't for his wife causing a stir, he'd probably be trashed an hour in and out at the party. He'd likely drink more after they threw her out of the ballroom. Besides, his sense of humor has never been good. It's just infuriating most of the time. But when he doesn't follow it up, if I sound a tiny bit frustrated speaking to my own superior, I'm not the one Wait, to blame. no. What? Are you kidding, Chief? Is this one of your practical jokes again? The temps won't say anything about it, but I... It's not that. They're orders. From the higher-ups. Oh, the higher-ups, yes. My favorite word. Since when did the higher-ups ever care about what the criminal investigation departments did? As far as I could tell, they don't give a hoot if... CID or SID is filled with cold cases, as long as we keep the spending low. When I need to view those old case files, though, they're locked away in archives. You're going to have to check with the higher-ups. I need to access these reports, see if the higher-ups would allow it. Every step, every move, in this case, there isn't one thing that hasn't been gated by some authority. If it's not the chief, it's the commissioner, or so they always tell me. It makes one wonder why they even bothered assigning it to anyone. Not a single one of them has done anything to help move the case. And they wonder why it's taking this long for even a hint of you progress to show. You can't just this on me. You can't just take me off like that. Yes, I can. And I'm sorry, Ashton. You're a good detective. One of the best I've seen in years, but... Three years, Chief. Three years! Three years since that anonymous tech leak blew up. Since Luke Wright's name was openly linked to several nasty dealings within Luxborn's corporate world, some of them involving deaths. Three years and I was the only one who made it this far. Made much progress that other officers with more experience weren't able to do when they handled this case. Just within a year, and with barely any help with the damn brass at that. Of course, I'll be pissed. Do you know what would have happened if I didn't work my ass off on this thing? If I didn't dedicate a whole year of my time on it? It would have gone cold, like every fucking case Luke Wright has been linked to. I saved this from getting thrown into the archives, sir. I'm getting close. If you could just... I'm fully aware of what you've done, Prey. But the commissioner hasn't been happy with your progress. Still too slow. 
slow by their standards. Too slow? Well, what about those reports I filed? I've documented every freaking thing for them. I've given you every important lead I can gather. Isn't that enough? They need results, not a bunch of research papers. Not one baseless assumption after another. Concrete proof, Frey. I'm really sorry. They've already made a decision. They're going to pass this on to someone who's been in the force longer. Someone who has more experience. Someone who has more experience? They meant nothing by it, but you're still too young to work on a case this big. Chief, I've already done more than what those old farts ever did behind their desks. All of it, within just a year of being assigned to this. Watch your language, Frey. Those are your superiors, your... I'm not some damn rookie fresh out of training! I'm as qualified as they are! Futile. I know it is. They never say it within my earshot, but for the very minute I stepped into their precinct, a lot of them had underestimated me. From their stairs alone to the assignments I got. To them, I'm still just a kid. Too young, too green, too inexperienced. And once they pulled that card of me, every argument I have gets thrown out the window. No matter how logical it is, how much I've accomplished, what records say, or the amount of work I put into every investigation they've thrown my way. Of your skills, kid. You wouldn't have that badge and rank if you weren't good enough. However, this case is just not for you. Too high profile, too risky to put a good officer on you in arm's way. How's it going? Can he even hear himself? Their reasoning is odd in itself. No one joins this line of work without knowing the Don't dangers of it. Don't I get a it. second chance? You said it yourself. I'm a good detective. It'll just be a matter of time before we can close this. It doesn't matter what I think, Frey. You're off the case, and that's final. I expect all related files and documents on my desk by Monday morning. And don't even try to go touch anything. I know how hard-headed and determined you are. Chief, please. A few more weeks. I'll have the proper evidence left on your desk by then. I swear it won't take longer than that. Friday's too late, boy. I've already informed the other officers. You aren't to be allowed access until you've been given a new assignment. Help just keep out of the precinct, Frey. Take the weekend off. Seriously, Chief, is this about last night? If this is about me being at that party, I have a good reason for... You were at the party. It makes me pause. His wary toe and the sudden careful note in his voice. Slowly a frown forms my face, my eyebrows knitting together in fusion. Much as I hate to say this about my own boss, there's, an, there's also suspicion in it. Hard not to think of it as ways of seeing how he acted around Hannah Wright last night. Is he worried? Why should he be? Everyone who's anyone was invited. I didn't doubt for a second why he received an invite, even if his presence was questionable. There's something wrong, and I've been unintentionally walked into it. All I have is a sneaking suspicion, but when one look at, at this from a different angle, but put everything together. Why the hell why the hell I've been taken off the case might be for the same reason he was there in the first place. Yes, Fuck. Chief. I was. For a good reason. A friend invited me to go with her. What were you doing there? I know we don't have a strict rule against attending functions, but that was... He coughs, and it almost sounds like he's choking on his own excuses? Lies? I don't want to excuse him of anything. Accuse him of anything. Yet he's someone I've respected since I've joined LPD, even with his bizarre sense of humor and tendency to procrastinate. He's obviously competent enough to get the job done. He wouldn't be Chief Inspector of Luxborn Police if he wasn't. He wouldn't last years in service without some track record backing him. Unless, too, unless that, too, is a fluke. And what backing him is not something, but someone. Oh. Oh, shit. Fucking hell. Fucking shit. Chief Harvey, about last night with the... Why does it matter, Fry? This isn't about that. Why does it matter? Why does it matter? I'll reset the whole damn oath we've taken upon being sworn into service if I can, but at this point it seems too late to remind him of that. He has probably already moved from serving them and protecting people to serving protecting his own interests. Damn it. I've suspected the upper brass of this, even the lower ranked subordinates in the force, but for my own boss? Shit, no wonder the leak didn't lead anywhere. Someone closer might have been pulling the strings. I might have set up, up to fail long before the fucking case had been assigned to me. But I don't want to just give up. I don't want to believe I've wasted an entire year for this. I don't want this to be the kind of news to tell Professor Clark after all those promises I've given him. I just want to know, sir, at the party, with Luke and Hannah Wright, you were... Monday, Detective Inspector. First thing in the morning. Every copy of the files you have, I want to see all on my table, understood? This isn't... Frey, am I understood? What else can 
gonna do other than smile and nod. With my own spear expecting an answer, using that tone, brushing my questions off as easily as discarding a yes. dead body. Yes, sir. He cuts the line as soon as the words are out. You're off the case, Ray, just like that. Funny with this still caught me off guard. I've discovered years ago, ago how different an actual thing is, how far from reality everything I've believed in a dreamy-eyed kid. There are no high-speed pursuits every day, no thrilling gunfights or exciting cases every step of the way. Only paperwork, lots of red tape, and dealing with politics and bureaucracy. Bureaucracy. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. Sciences. I've set out to change things, hoping it'll make things better for the people I care about. It ended up changing me instead. Served me right for being too idealistic, I guess. This is probably the universe telling me that it's better to remain the skeptic I really am. Now, here I am, standing useless. Can't even do anything but grip my teeth and kick the wall. The, the bastard didn't even acknowledge my response. What did the poor wall ever do to you?